Ouch.
Hello. Hi, Alan. How are you doing? All right. How are you? Pretty good. Uh, semester's finally over at St. Ambrose. And I just today finally finished grading the final exams. No, that's good. What classes did you have? Astronomy and physics. Almost 60 students in the physics class. The exams were totally online, which frankly makes it a lot more awkward trying to grade. Yeah. Well, that's a lot of students. How many uh, sessions do you have there with 60? Is that three? Two. Two? Wow. Big class. Well, no, normally we have in a class in a classroom that's normally large enough to hold that many at a time. Well, I know the uh, the time uh, I did the dynamics class that there was 27 in that, and it was it was about all I could handle. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work. And and this this was the algebra trig based physics, which means a lot of other a lot more majors require it than just the engineering. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> anyway, you have my admiration because I know it's hard work. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very hard. Uh. <clears throat> well. So. How's life with you? Well, pretty good. How's Pac doing? Uh, I think Pac's doing great. Um, we're getting a lot of uh, requests now for public outreach events, observing sessions and programs. So tomorrow night we have one at John Deere Middle School. Mm. And ideally, we would have hoped to set up scopes and observe, but I think it's probably going to be raining. So we're sounds gonna. Like, sounds like gonna be raining all week. Yeah, and uh, the teacher wanted to, you know, think about rescheduling, and I said, well, when are you going to reschedule it? Because if you reschedule it, it'll probably have to be next year. <laughs> at this point, because <clears throat> the, the weather forecasts are not good. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take our uh, uh, program inside. So I think it'll be all right. Yep. Hi, Craig. Hello there. Hey, Craig. How's everything? Good. Good. Great. I can't. I can't see what. What's your? What does your shirt say? Barbados. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. I don't know what the weather's like there today. Well, it's uh, mostly cloudy, but a little warm. It it didn't rain here. Did it rain there yesterday? Um, last night. Okay, sun, last night. It's been raining. We we had quite a bit of rain here over the last twenty four hours. I'd say I don't know exactly what. I think it. I think it started here last night. <clears throat> Continued on through the morning. It's supposed to rain some more, I think, uh, tonight. Mm -hmm. I think they're calling for rain all week, so we're getting our moisture yeah, now. Eventually, kind of it is a bust for me because we we just got some shelving units for the Menke Observatory, and we really need to move the Wayne stuff out of the roll-off building into the classroom with the shelves, but you know, it's gonna be like this and we won't be able to do it this week. Is that just moving from the one building over into the, the uh, Menke Observatory? Yes. <laughs> but, but also involves get, moving the shelves. With their, their shelves are in storage downtown right now, so we have to... Oh. Get them, dry them up, set them up in the classroom, then move the stuff onto them. Craig, uh, where are you at? I'm in a town called Wakanda. It's uh, in Lake County, above Chicago. 
I would say it's, it's about 50, 55 miles from Chicago, or is it more? Well, it's, you know, about, what, 15 miles east of Crystal Lake? Maybe they don't Yeah. Well, I'd say it's about 50 50 between Chicago and Rockford. We're about 28 miles, 30 miles from the border. So South pretty close South. to Wisconsin. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I like it up here. It's got a great vibe. There, it's Lake County. There's lakes everywhere, which is picturesque. Nice. We are <clears throat> one block off of one of the large lakes up here. We're not on the lake, but uh, our association has two large beaches that we could use anytime. <clears throat> yeah, it's very nice. It's, uh, I don't think it is, it is as dark as Sherman Park up here, but it's close. We still have the glow from Chicago vicinity. Do you have an observatory there? Well, I have contacted two of the groups up here. And, uh, you know, with COVID everything, it's kind of hard to get contact. I've emailed some, had a short conversation with a group up here called Lake County Astronomy Society and they do not go out to view. They're still locked down. Hmm. Yeah, they meet only on, uh, you know, like we are here. Hmm. I went up to look at their, their site and it's not. It's a state park. They meet up there a lot. It's north of here, about a 12 minute drive from here, north up by, uh, Oh, it's, like I said, it's just north, straight north of here. But it's a state park, and they close at 8 p.m. every day, which hmm. is not good for us. I says, well, how do they view? Because the, I was looking at the parking lot. It's a nice, adequate-sized parking lot, nice and flat. Looking around, you, you have some trees at a distance, but nothing that bad. So it'd be a good place to have a viewing, but I'm gonna have to look into it a little bit more. I've been still in the process of moving in. Uh, we were gonna move about six months ago, but we chose with COVID to wait until we got our vaccine. Yeah. And we got both ours, oh my, a month and a half ago. So we're good there. And we found a place up here. It's a nice big house, fairly modern, quiet neighborhood. Yeah, it's nice. Are you working up there or did you retire there? Oh, I retired. My I retired almost five years ago <laughs> at 62. It's a smart thing to do. Yep. Yep. Uh, I've been setting up on my scopes. Um, I'm going ZWO on the camera, automatic focuser. I'm using what they call a ZWO Air, which is a main computer hub that runs everything. So it's gonna, it's gonna do, with plate solving, it's gonna do alignment, as well as uh, centering your, uh, your position for Polaris. And when you move to a particular object, it automatically takes a picture. It's sort of like uh, Astro Tortilla. And it will move the scope back to center where you should be taking that picture. And then you can, you can set up for the whole night on what you wanna do. The only thing it won't do for you is flats. I have what they call a two inch dark filter with a color wheel with the I've got a thick five position filter wheel which is automatic and when it does darks and biases it will move to that filter take the pictures of what you want darks bias and then takes the lights yeah it's 
I'm excited to get it going. I'm still waiting for one of the cameras for the guide scope. The only thing bad about it is this hub does not take my old ZWO 120. I have a 120 MC and they decided to leave that off the list. Oh well. Hi hey, Rusty. Greetings. How you doing Rusty? Pretty good. How are you guys? Great. <laughs> well, that's always good. Yeah. Yep. Sam, Jeff, okay. hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Sam. <laughs> Going on? Um, nothing. Just small talk. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Ah, oh, I changed the camera. But it's a wide angle camera, so it shows way too much and I look like way too small. I don't know. Yeah, I've seen smaller. Hey, Jeff, have you uh, got your observatory done yet? Nope, it's been sitting in my backyard for what, a year, two years now? It's waiting for somebody to pour some concrete. I might have to set it up over at Mankey instead. How much uh, concrete do you need? Well, it's the uh, pier pad that is the problem. Because, Russ, if I remember right, I have to bore down a 24-foot wide, 4-foot deep hole. 24-inch? Yeah. 5-foot deep? Is that the frost line? Yeah. 42 okay. inches, 24 inches around, 42 inches deep. So I got to oh. find somebody that's got an auger. And I'm really kind of thinking about just pouring you, a regular You don't slab. have to find somebody that has the auger. You have to find somebody that has the equipment to drive it. You can rent the auger from uh, some of the hardware stores locally because the guy who did our deck rented the 24 inch auger from one somebody in town, and he has his little uh, bobcat with his with his uh, auger driver attached to it, and he just went and rented the the auger and did uh, eight holes, I think, or six holes in a matter of uh, probably a couple of hours. It was even less. So I was thinking about forgetting that pier because, you know, I only have a few degrees of sky to look at. So mm. I was wondering if it was worth all that trouble and bother for that. All I can tell you is that I emailed Dave Mercy. Uh, Wapsy doesn't have an auger. No. But the round cardboard tubing, you can get those at Lowe's in a variety of diameters. Yeah. Yep. 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 So Look, what you need to do is find out has what order size you're going to have, or somebody that's willing enough to dig a hole, <laughs> put the tube in place, and bury it around it. Heck of a hole to dig. Yeah, it is. So anyway, like I was Damn. saying, I was thinking about not even pouring any kind of a pier for concrete pier, just uh, pouring a six-inch slab and bolting it down to the six inch slab. Anybody know someone with a trained woodchuck? <laughs> They're hard to train.
Meaning Cecil. Howdy. Travis might even join us tonight. Travis who? The guy that I got the uh, six inch um, and telescope for. Jeff, did you uh, you get that second telescope that I sent you, email? Yes. Isn't that about the same thing as the one in Japan? Yes. Only the name brand is different. Yep. It's cheaper, too. Much so. <clears throat> uh, Ron Mullen, I presume. Hey. Good evening, everyone. Wet evening. Yes, wet evening. <laughs> Good evening. But yeah, I got his uh, telescope put together tonight and uh, collimated it, and it's all ready to take outside and see if the encoders work. And then if they do, I'll drop it off. Molly, what are you doing? We need an opening act. <laughs> well, I can tell you a philosophical joke. So these three guys got killed in a car accident. And they're standing in front of St. Peter up in heaven. And St. Peter says, you know, you only have one rule here in heaven. Don't step on the rabbits. The three guys kind of look at each other and say, yeah, okay, yeah, no big deal. So they get inside heaven and the place is full of rabbits. I mean, you, can, you can't even hardly take a step without stepping on a rabbit. They're all pretty careful. But after a couple of days, one of them steps on a rabbit. And poof, St. Peter is there and has the absolutely ugliest woman this guy has ever seen. St. Peter handcuffs him to the woman and disappears. So for the rest of his stay in heaven, he's got this ugly woman handcuffed to him. Well, the other two are apparently kind of shocked and they're careful. But after a couple of days, one of them steps on a rabbit. There's St. Peter, poof, handcuffs him to the absolutely ugliest woman he has ever seen and then disappears. The third guy is, I mean, is so careful, hardly moves. All of a sudden, St. Peter comes, poof, and handcuffs this guy. Sales of electric vehicles increase. The absolutely it, most it, beautiful it, woman he has ever seen and disappears. The man it, looks up at the woman and says, just well, I don't know what I deserve to get you. And she looks at him and says, I don't know either, but I stepped on a rabbit. That is supposed to be a philosophical joke. Is I that the name of the rabbit? Was Phil? I, 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 I'm not sure what what philosophical that is, but it's supposed to be a philosophical yeah. question. So there's closing the barn door after the horses have all escaped, and then there's adding a second lane to your canal after a giant skyscraper sized ship got stuck for six days and disrupted global trade for weeks. What kind of philosophical joke is this? 
Now, uh, somebody's got a lot of stuff. Canal to make it oh. safer and wider yeah. and extend a second lane to allow for, get this, more two way traffic. And Some, a- somebody <laughs> had a podcast going on. <laughs> Paul, are you there? Gamino, is that you? Orlando? I'm here. No, it's not me. Now Jim joins us. Jim? Hello. <laughs> Hello. 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 Hi. Hello. 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 <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all on Zoom, so telling to spread out wouldn't make any wouldn't make any <laughs> sense. <laughs> yep. few more minutes. What was that? Did anybody get hurt? I think that was Jan getting uh, ice out of the freezer. Loud ice. It's like the finder scope on mine, except with a diagonal. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. I'm going to probably try to find him a uh, red dot finder for it instead. But it's got a different mechanism on it, like my 12 inch does. Uh, instead of the springs like yours does, it has those tension knobs. Mm-hmm. And I think it needs those because of the encoders. I think that helps draw it up tight enough so when you pivot the scope that uh, it registers on the hand controller. So whose scope is this? This one is gonna, is uh, a friend of mine at work. His name's Travis Ortel. And he might be joining us tonight. He, he'll be joining the club. But, uh, he told me to watch out for a scope for him. And I said, okay, well, I know exactly what I'd recommend to you. And if you don't like it, I will keep it because I've always wanted one. So it's just a little six inch Dobsonian. It's an F8. So it's, it's kind of tall, but uh, six inch ought to gather plenty of uh, light and being an F8, you ought to get enough uh, magnification to see quite a bit. That knob on the left side of the tube, is that standard? This? That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, mine has got that on there too. This is exactly like my truss knob, except for oh, side, I've got trusses. So it's pretty nice. You point it straight up and hit enter, and then you find a couple stars and hit enter. And uh, with my scope like this, I, I found that 107 Messier objects and 11 other in one night. 
So 118 objects in one night is pretty good. So. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I and I bought that tripod from Sam, and it came with two eyepieces for one reason or other, a ten inch, uh, ten millimeter, and a twenty five millimeter. I misread the uh, twenty five millimeter. There was a, uh, it, the cellophane was folded over it in a way that it looked like it was said five millimeter. So it came with a ten and a twenty five, and I'd like to see if I can find something in between for him. 25 is a good standard though. Yeah, 25 will be perfect in this scope. So uh, I'll be talking to Cecil later because I got another 25 from him thinking that it came with a five and a 10. So uh, if Cecil's got anything between 10 and 25 you'd like to get rid of instead, that would be cool. If not, uh, two eyepieces will work for him just fine until I find a third. What size okay. are you looking for? somewhere around a 15 because then he'd be kind of in between everything like i said i i've got a 10 and a 25 i'm going to give him so either that or a two by barlow that'd work yeah i'm not a, a barlow kind of guy and i a lot of people are but i don't want to uh persuade or, or give anything that I, I wouldn't use myself. So like you said, Craig, a lot of people swear by him. I just don't. So you swear at him. <laughs> I do. I do. I, it's a when you when you buy stuff for people, it's your perfect opportunity to put your own opinion on somebody. So um, with these two, uh, he'll be able to study up and if he thinks a barlow will work for him, he can go on his own and do that. But I collimated it for him and uh, man, I, I was able to adjust it and get it right on real easily. So uh, I'm real happy about that. It collimates easier than my 12 inch for some reason. The secondary is always a pain in the butt for me to adjust. So this one just works so smooth and easy. And well taken care of then. Yeah, yeah, it did well. It has one little ding. That's not the ding, but but it looks about that size. It's just a little thumb rub kind of a thing on it, but otherwise it's in great shape. Um, the, the mirror is not near as dusty as mine, so he must have just had it packed up like that for a long time. It smells a little bit mothball-y inside, mm -hmm. but uh, nothing that a few nights out wouldn't fix. So it'll be exciting to grab it. The, the, I downloaded the PDF and this is, it's got a handle and they show the, the person carrying it with the tube in there by the handle. <clears throat> so uh, I'm gonna check that out later. I don't think I recommend doing it with that hand controller on there. Chances are that'll bounce off the Velcro and that, but maybe if you take off the finder scope, the eyepieces and the hand controller, maybe you can carry it that way, short distances. Yeah. Okay, we should get started. All right, and uh, yes, we are recording meeting. So, call the meeting into order. I was not saying. All right, how's everyone doing tonight? Very good. Camp. And if you're taking an order, I would have some chicken burritos. <laughs> oh, man. That's a dad joke. Yeah, well, it's late and I'm tired. Why, why do dads think they're funny? I don't know. All right, so... Um, did everyone get the email I sent out last night about the, so general, just like a quick rundown of the agenda. All right. Yeah. So, uh, past events, uh, the, uh, St. Ambrose had its first, uh, public night from Menke quote unquote. 
on May 8th. It was virtual only because of weather. And uh, well, we, we spent most of the time, uh, we had one, one visitor joining us that night. He was asking a question about uh, some advice on a telescope to start with astrophotography. And we pretty much spent the entire public night giving, giving our advice to him. Yeah, that was me. I think he's visiting again tonight. I uh, am. Yeah. As a matter of fact, yes, there he is right now, Dan, yes. Dan Cusack. Hello. Yes. Hello. Hello. Well, Dan, you are a hardy breed if you took all our garbage last time and you come back for more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty serious about it, so here I am. Excellent, excellent. Glad, glad you could come. Glad to be here. Yep. And, and thanks for all the advice again. <laughs> Yeah, you, you'll find that we're all, none of us are short on advice. I'm willing to listen. <laughs> I've been warned. All right. And May 10th was PAC's most recent meeting. Uh, and I said we, we all enjoyed the uh, guest speaker that you had, had that night on solar activity. And this past Saturday was Astronomy Day at Bettendorf High School. Um, again, weather forced us inside. And as it turned out, it forced us inside twice. Well, actually, well, actually once inside and once kind of under a... Well, <coughs> you want to talk about what happened then? Sure. We, we had uh, at the beginning, uh, when we were under the main entrance or in the main entrance, we, we had a guy talk to us for quite a while. His dad was what, a physics professor at some little town of 300 or so in uh, uh, Arizona. Nebraska, Nebraska. Nebraska. So uh, we had a real nice chat about telescopes and stuff with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had what, maybe a half a dozen other people just kind of chit chat a little bit in there. And then we had to relocate uh, because we had our vehicles kind of up close and uh, they had a dance competition there again. So uh, we were located to a different entrance and uh, we had probably a half a dozen or so uh, people show up at that entrance. Uh, it was pretty nice. They got to look through scopes. Uh, they looked through uh, Sam's and Cecil's and uh, Robert's Dobb, then went upstairs and watched the uh, planetarium shows. And, it's kind of fun. And if I might say, the entrance of the planetarium is no closer to where we were than at the main entrance. Oh, it was about the same? Yep. Yeah. And next year, I, I talked to one, of, well, actually, I talked to both of the uh, Bettendorf High folks. And uh, maybe next year, we can do some kind of broadcast um, if, if, if we get decent skies, we can broadcast the sun and they can shoot it up on the, in the planetarium. And, uh, you know, we can kind of do a Zoom meeting type of thing. And if anybody's logging in virtually, they can ask questions and uh, be heard in the planetarium and we could discuss. And if they uh, join us, they can be seen. So that'd be kind of a fun thing to try. So, um, We'll give that a shot next year, maybe. Yes, the guy we talked to said that he, he could think of more than one way to uh, to connect between the telescope and the planetarium dome, depending on the computer equipment that would be involved. And he, he did say that the like a uh, firewalls at the Bettendorf High School computer system might be a problem. Yeah, but we might be able to work around those. Yeah, you thought maybe we could use one of the school's computers too. To, to broadcast through that way, we wouldn't have to worry about a firewall. Then we talked about uh, rather than using Zoom, just broadcasting from St. Ambrose's uh, YouTube channel. And then they could just log into the channel upstairs and do about the same thing. So, so yeah, there's a number of different ways we can do it. And uh, we talked about practicing it a couple times before we actually attempted it. But uh, we've got plenty of time and lots of bad weather to give that a shot through. Mm -hmm. For those of you who don't know, Ambrose is our 
specifically, this is a YouTube channel that I set up, uh, particularly for astronomy from St. Ambrose. And it's called Ambrose Astro, no spaces. And actually, that's the channel that I post the uh, recorded general meetings of our club on. Okay. And uh, yeah, so you're talking about plenty of cloudy nights to play with. It sounds like that it's going to be cloudy and or rainy for pretty much every day this week. All right. Well, hopefully it'll clear up by June 5th, which is our club's next public night. And uh, like we did last week, we're hoping that we'll be able to broadcast via Zoom from Menke Observatory itself. And I think that we're able to have club members at least show up and set up their rigs and uh, yes, you know, participate that way rather than uh, not. So that'll be a good thing. I still think, are, are we still kind of on hold uh, with public attending that? Well, I, I'm actually, I can tell you Ambrose just lifted uh, some of the mask mandates. We're no longer required to be masked outside. Okay. So I'm assuming that includes the observatory. So yeah, we can. Uh, Maybe we can do both have public and virtual going on out there. Uh, public can view through member scopes if they'd like and uh, we can broadcast through the Mankey scope since it's got you know everything we need there to do it. And we're, we're, we're still required to be masked in public indoor places. So we'd probably st we'd still have to wear masks in the classroom. And, and in the okay. Well, that's a good reason then just to broadcast from inside and have public viewing on the outside. Hmm. Yes. And then, uh, you know, we can clean eyepieces in between a little bit. Cecil, that worked pretty good over at Bettendorf, didn't it? Because I, I yeah. know that you were, uh, yeah. Yeah. So did you use like a, a alcohol and a Q-tip type of thing? Alcohol and toilet paper. No, sh shoot. <laughs> um, I, do, I do have to say the toilet paper did not hold up well when you were rubbing it with the, uh, with the alcohol on it. Not. Um, I could use a Q-tip, that would work too. Yeah, yeah. Q-tip or, or strong, stronger toilet paper. Yeah, none of that cheap single ply stuff, huh? But maybe Q-tips might be a little bit better bet. I don't know. Yeah, but if, but if we have a thousand visitors, that toilet papers take care of. Yeah, have them bring their own TP. <laughs> I got a mess of Q-tips here. You bring them out. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, June twelfth is not only St. Ambrose's next public night at Mankey Observatory, but it's also the Space Weekend at Putnam. And are we still talking about uh, maybe, bringing a few, maybe bringing a few solar scopes to that if the weather permits? Yeah, I guess I planned on bringing some and I was hoping to get at least one other person that had a mount because I've got two solar scopes and we could put one of the solar scopes on a second mount if someone's got one that they want to bring and run. Okay. And then June 14th is PAC's next meeting. Alan, anything interesting coming up for that? Yeah, we're going to have a uh, guest speaker uh, for that. Uh, his, his name is Matthew Will. And he's associated with the uh, Association of uh, Lunar and Planetary Observers. And he's going to give a uh, talk uh, using Zoom for that meeting. So I'll try to get that organized and uh, make it work a little smoother this time. Uh, and we'll invite we'll invite everybody, both clubs. I I couldn't get into I couldn't get into your last meeting. Yeah, the uh, we had a problem because uh, there was some sort of technical foul up at uh, Butterworth Center. We couldn't use their Zoom link, so we had to create a, another one 
at the last minute, and we tried to get everybody uh, updated on on that link, but obviously we missed a few, and I apologize for that. However, we did record the uh, meeting, so the presentation's out there on our uh, uh, YouTube channel. So if uh, if I think of it, I'll try to email it to you. See, uh, Cecil, that was you, right? That asked yeah. about it. <clears throat> I'll I'll email you the link to that. Okay, thank you. Sounds good. And now, then, hey, Alan, is, is there a chance that during the PAC meetings you could give Robert a couple seconds to invite and uh, to our the next QCS meeting? Yeah, I it kind of slipped my mind uh, last time. I I usually try to uh, put in a plug for QCAS uh, activities, and I think it may have slipped my mind last time, and I apologize. So I yeah, I think you mentioned it, but, but it'd be good to have uh, his voice on there. But yep. you know, you usually do, and I know you had a lot of stuff going on at that last one, so it's no big deal. Um, I, I just didn't know. Uh, I just thought I'd just put in an extra plug for us in there. So, yeah, I I would say, uh, Robert, you've got a standing agenda item in our meeting. If you know, uh, if I forget, make sure you remind me. You're not going to hurt my feelings. Okay. <laughs> All right. And well, further plug, uh, June 19th is PAC's next public night, Niobe, Niobe Zoo. Yep. All right. Again, weather permitting. Yeah. It's the Midwest, who knows? And then haven't heard anything different about the meteor shower party scheduled for August 7th. So at least nothing, nothing, I've, nothing I've heard about changing plans there. I think everybody knows we did buy a telescope to raffle off for that. So uh, we'll be able to do that again. Um, the, the board will have to talk about if the event is canceled, do we want to keep trying to raffle it off or do we want to save it for another event? So we'll, we'll the board will have to decide what they want to do. All right. And since we're keeping Eastern Iowa a pretty int intimate affair this year, probably not probably not much sense in considering that that is a raffle event, huh? No, and it's a pretty uh, beginner scope for that that group of folks. Of course. So maybe it would be one of those things where uh, if we decide that we can sell enough raffle tickets, publicizing uh, the media shower party, then we can go ahead and do it. But if we decide uh, that we wanna just sell tickets at the event, then that's a different thing. It's just so hard to, to sell tickets and then try to go collect money driving around or meeting people places that it seems to make more sense just to advertise there's going to be a raffle and they can buy tickets when they're there and don't have to be present to win. But, but again, weren't, we, we can, weren't we talking about one point about setting up some kind of, I don't know, something like PayPal or something to connect it to our, our club's bank account? Yeah, whatever happened with that? I, I think it's uh, kind of uh, just didn't get done because we just didn't get around to finishing up the process. And I don't know, maybe it's set up and I just don't remember that it is. No, it's not. Okay. No, because Jason was going to work on that and he never did. And I don't know if he had something to do with uh, that we needed to pretty much have some form of uh, online access to the account before he could do it. So, yeah, we need to talk to him about it. Maybe on the next board meeting or something. Sounds good. Yes. Yeah, that would be, that would be great. That way we don't have, <laughs> if we can keep doing that and everything is accessible online, we can probably get rid of the PO box. I don't know how do you feel about it, but it would be nice not to have, at least for me, not to have to drive all the ways across town just to open the box to find just one single item in there, you know? Yeah. Yes. I don't Good know. Why but, you know, it, it makes it easier for people to send their their dues rather than 
Although I, I assume there was still other people that would still send a check. Yeah, well, I think mostly to maintain our 5013C, I think that we have to have a mailing address. But that doesn't mean that we have to like actively use it a lot. You know, we can promote uh, PayPal on our website. And then if anybody asks or says that they don't do that, they want to mail it, then just give it in those cases. Yep. All right. But, uh, I think that covers upcoming events. So I've got one that I'd like to add, Dr. Mitchell. And yes. we, we could probably add it with the observatory relocation. But this Friday uh, afternoon, I'll be going over to Wilton Observatory. And uh, I'm having kind of an initial meeting with them. Uh, I'm, hopefully, I'm getting keys to the observatory and to the school and uh, getting whatever access materials I need to get and going through the gear real quick. Uh, what the goal is, is I'll be contracting with them to learn all their gear and get it all set up and train one or two people on how to use it out there. And for doing that, they're gonna donate $1,000 to the club that we can use for the observatory relocation. So uh, the first official meeting that I'm gonna have with that is Friday at four o'clock. And I don't know whether if anybody wants to go out there just to kind of hang, um, part, part of the, my agreement with them is that when I need help out there that I can bring anybody I want. So uh, depending on the gear, I might be seeing if I can get some of you guys to go out with me if, for no more than moral support out there, just to have a second body in case uh, I fall off the top of the uh, telescope or something, I don't know. But anyway, um, yeah, it's an elaborate setup. They, they've got my same mount. So uh, it's kind of nice because I can learn my mount al along with learning what they're using, what I've already learned. But uh, it's, it's a mead, I think it's a, a 12 inch mead that they've got out there and I'm not as familiar with mead products. So uh, I, I might enlist somebody uh, familiar with mead. Um, I forget what kind of cameras he has out there. Uh, but uh, when I figure that out, then I'll see if any of you guys have those kind of cameras and I'll find out what kind of software do that type of thing so that uh, maybe we can streamline the uh, learning curve and the training curve out there. So. But, yeah, uh, if I remember correctly, the last time we were there uh, for the tour, I think he had a couple of ZWOs, but he also has a couple of addicts in there. Yeah. And I don't remember what he's got for filter wheel. I don't remember what he's got for electronic focuser. Yeah, he had a huge filter wheel that takes 12 yeah. filters. I've never seen one that size. Yeah, and then he's got uh, the star sense on the thing which I'd like to get, I'll probably pull off because he won't need it with that mount. But anyway, um, I'll, I'll probably be taking a week or two off of work to uh, spend uh, some days out there learning gear and software, and then uh, a, a number of nights out there doing the alignments and getting it all, the models created for him so he doesn't have to do anything, so. Anyway, that, that's it for that. I'll just, I'll just keep everybody posted via email and uh, probably not on Facebook. Yeah. They'll probably go out via email. Okay. Sounds good. Hope that goes well. Yeah. All right. Um, any, anyone bought any new gear recently? Finally got my, uh, my scope in uh, last week. Um, I've got a uh, One Sky 130 uh, tabletop truss top of Sony. So uh, got that all put together. It's got a red dot finder on it. Um, did some collimation on it. it. It was very, very close, but it came with a collimation uh, yep. uh, lens for it. and. Uh, Got it all balanced, and so now I just have to wait for some clear skies. So you have to keep your eye on them for a few days. Or do some traveling. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, it's uh, uh, so far real happy with it, and uh, um, looking wow. at uh, 
getting uh, getting a couple clear nights and see what I can see. Yeah. Cool. Good. You don't have a picture of it, do you? Well, I've got better than that. Ooh. Demonstration time. Yeah. Nice. Ah. Well, here we go. Here we go. And the secondary pulls up, right? The the truss? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all built on there and just pulls out. Okay. Oh, yeah. I see I see the truss now on the side. Yeah. Does it yeah, fit your suitcase? Good. Well, right, because they're sealed until you open them up. So so it goes out to six hundred and fifty, I think. Um, okay. um so, yeah. So, yeah. Very okay. cool. Very cool. So, you know, it's, so it looks like it'll be fun. Yeah, you're not kidding. Very portable, very portable, which is uh, what I was looking for and for first scope. Mm -hmm. and so, what, what, what was the brand? And then I got, uh, Here. It's a, it's a one sky. I got it. Oh, the okay. The, the AWS thing. Yeah. Yeah, the AWS scope, but yep. it's a Celestron 130. So, uh, and I went ahead and got a. Um, or AWB, yeah. I should say, Astronomer yeah, Without AWB, Borders. Yeah. yeah, Astronomy Without Borders. Yeah. So, uh, got their uh, um, got their kit with it. So, uh, got uh, what is it? Oh, now I've got a six. Um, 6, 11, 17, and 25. Wow. Got uh, three filters, uh, red, blue, and moon filter. Um, collimation. Um, of course, the red dot finder. Um, so yeah, came, kind of got, uh, I went all out and got the package. So I should, should be able to, should be able to do something now. Yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. And you, did you say it came with a moon filter? Uh, the, yeah, the accessory kit yeah. I got with it. Yeah, it had red, uh, red, blue, and moon filter. Yeah, you'll use that moon filter a lot on the moon. It, 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 the moon gets pretty harsh really quick, you know. Right, yeah. Like that. So that's great. Yeah, for sure. So, so anyway, there we go. That's, uh, that's my new toy. Is that and my first toy. So it'll be the first, the, my first scope, and one that I'll probably never get rid of. No, I wouldn't either. Do you remember how how long that is? That like an F five, F six? You know? Yeah, it is F five. F five, yeah. Good, good. You're right yeah, at that point. You don't need a coma corrector. You'll be in good shape. Yeah. So should be able to see uh, see quite a bit with it. Cool. Good. Yeah. Who else has some new gear? Come on, Rolando, you buy something for every meeting. <laughs> uh, no, I don't have anything. Just been looking, but I haven't bought anything. Else? Well, I, don't see, I don't see that Travis joined us yet. I was bragging about your pictures of uh, M13, Rolando. Yeah, that was kind of it was kind of fun in the backyard doing that. Yeah. Yeah, I thought they looked pretty good. Did you want to throw that up on the screen and share it? Me or Sam? Anybody? I don't know. I don't have it on my computer. It's on my. It's only on my phone. Uh... So let's see here, share screen. Oops. Share screen one. Okay. Oh shoot, hang on here. 
There you go. Are you seeing that at all? Yeah. Yes. So that's the wrong. Let me get the other picture here. Yeah, I thought the, I thought the other one was nicer. Yeah. Yeah, that's the first one. And yeah. This is the second one that had a little bit more color in it. Yeah, and it has more detail too. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was pretty nice. Yeah, what gear were you using on that one? So I had my uh, Astrotech uh, 80, and then I was using my uh, Horizon 2 camera. Is that single shot or is that processed? That's just a single shot. I just took a snapshot. Very good. It's uh it's a one shot color camera, but but I think were you using like the I I wasn't stacking anything, so I was just using the so it comes with that video so that you can focus everything. So I, I had it focused and then I just took a right. quick snapshot, two of them. Okay. So it's a start. Mm -hmm. Good start. Anyone else? Anyone planning on selling any gear? Dude. Yeah, I do have some, don't I? But uh, Jeff has uh, requested the, the motion pad for the gob. And uh, I got to get the rest of this stuff out of storage first before I go any further on that topic. I have a few things. I'm thinking about selling my melon can. I uh, yeah, don't use it as much. I have two of them actually. But anyway, once I get everything out of storage, I can get everything laid out and work from there. Okay. Anyone yeah, else? I've got, a, I've got a dovetail plate. It's um, supposedly for a, a C gem celestron, but it's the narrow one. I have one that uses a wide one. So if somebody needs a narrow dovetail, I, I got one. Did you say that was about 11 inches long, 12 inches long? I don't think it's that long. Um, it looks like it's a, maybe eight inches. Okay. I don't have any way to measure it right away, but. So I guess it's close enough. Yeah, it's a, it's a Vixen style. It looks like it'd look good for like a uh, 80 millimeter or uh, up to maybe 102 millimeter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It kind of looks like the standard one that uh, you get with Orion gear. Well, it could it could be? It may be you know maybe the uh, the new standard. Like I yeah. said on 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 my C gem, it uses the wider one. Good. All right. I keep on losing the agenda and having to go back and find it. Well, n next, I had down uh, in lieu of a presentation, we do a review of uh, the astronomy day at Bettendorf. Um, I think we pretty much covered most of that earlier in the in the meeting. I mean, does any um, Sam, Cecil, Jeff, you were all there. Any, anything to add to it? Anything to add to what we said already? Nope, that's, uh, that's about it. 
It was cold. Well, there is one other thing, and somebody else needs to expound on it, but when we were at the main entrance, kind of talking with people, we heard this big bang. Actually, oh, yeah. let me back up a second. Uh, we were talking to people and we heard a police siren go by the high school. Then we heard a big bang. And then I think you guys all saw the news, right? About a uh, car hitting a police car on Maple Crest or near Maple Crest. That's the street uh -huh. right across from Benton North High School. And I guess a couple people went to the hospital and I didn't hear any more about it. Anybody else want to expound on that? I didn't hear anything else. I looked it up online and that's all that they said. So they said that it was still it was still in, in the, they were still investigating, but that they I don't think they ever came back with anything. No. But yeah, that was going on while we were there and uh where we were set up, we were right across from the uh one of the squad cars with their lights on all the time and uh so it was pretty uh interesting event there. Yeah. I'm glad it wasn't one of uh, a participant that got hit by a car or something. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, can't recall everything that you said about it. I just think that uh, it would have been it would have been better if we would have had a chance to take advantage of all the traffic generated by the by the dance competition. I'm pretty sure half of the people that walk by could care less, but, but at least 50% of the people would have been more interested than the people that, the people that we got obviously came because they were going to the planetarium, but uh, very few. So we, we spent mo most of the afternoon talking among themselves, among ourselves, which is, which we do all the time. Nothing personal, Jeff, Robert, Cecil, but uh, <laughs> I'm much sure talk to somebody else. Well, thanks, Sam. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, if we had a little bit better weather, uh, we could have done a little bit better advertising, but it's kind of hard to advertise an event that you know isn't going to be all that uh, great. So if we had sunny skies, we could have, uh, you know, done more on the Ambrose site and on the county sites and uh, on our own Facebook pages and stuff. But, um, and I think um, Chris like held back advertising it a bit on Bettendorf. He wanted to do more. And I don't think he did because of the weather. So when you know mega days in advance that it's going to be bad, you know, sometimes it doesn't pay. All the more reason to try some kind of a Zoom next time. Yeah, yeah. We could, we could do a, like a presentation on Zoom if nothing else is going on. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, let's have a quick treasurer's report from Sam. This ought to be interesting. Why? You'll, you'll, we'll, we'll explain why after, after your report. Yeah, but I, I hadn't, I, I haven't included any of that in this report because I will not count my eggs until they are hatched. Then just report on what we have right now. Okay, so what we have right now is uh, for the general fund, we have 2,178. 2, 38. 33, right. Oh, wait. 73. 21,78, okay. And then for the event, uh, Budget or fund, we got 40228. 40228. And for the observatory relocation, we have 7,047.78. 7, for a grand total of 9628.79. 9628.79. Okay. 
26, 28, 79. Okay. Any discussion on that? Any discussion? Is that in uh, Bitcoin? Uh. <laughs> Better not be. What are they saying? Bitcoin uses more electricity than some countries on Earth? <laughs> well, I'll make a motion to accept it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Accepted. We have a total of $9,628.79 in our treasury right now. And to that, we can now add $13,500 from Regional Development Authority. At least that's what we've been promised. Now it's about half of the half of the grant that we applied for, but it now, now means that we do have some more money that we can put toward the observatory project. And I, I'm pretty sure this definitely means we'll be able to at least build the either 10 by 16 dome building or 12 by 16 dome building, depending on exactly how big the dome is. So we, did we finally settle on how big it is? I think we said it was 12 six, right, Jim? Yeah, the outside dimension of the dome is 12 foot six inches. All right. So now. I so um, I was reading that, that letter that they sent you. Have you started the, the process of uh, filling out the agreement form? No, not yet. I got to make a note of that. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. You know, I will, until that form is signed and sent back so that we can get our check, I, I would not include it in my uh, accounting. Agreed. Is that something that we need to meet with, uh, the board needs to meet and fill out the document, or is that something you'll do on your own, Robert? I'll take a look at that. Uh, I'll take a look at the letter again tomorrow, tomorrow morning, and then I'll get back to you. Okay. All that it says is complete the grant agreement form, and it uh, apparently it has a whole bunch of check boxes that you need to check. I, I, I don't think we have to. Well, I don't know until you look at the form if we need to submit anything else, but I don't think so. I think it's just this form, and then once the form it, and it's online, the agreement is totally online, and they they said that they can send the check to the organization right away. All right. Then, yes. So this is the budget that I attached to the application, uh, detailing at least our original plans for the money. Now, of course, this, this was contingent on us getting the full $27,000. So yeah, we figure, yeah, we definitely have enough to make the dome building. Although if, if we're only getting 13,500, I don't know, do we wanna, weight on the new telescope and mount or how how closely do we need to adhere to the original plan that's why i was kind of wondering if we should get together as a board and go over that agreement document to see what they're stipulate, stipulating right in there mm -hmm. but you know uh, um the price of materials and stuff gone up so maybe uh, between the, the 13 we're getting and the seven we have, maybe we can <clears throat> get that new 12 and a half by 16 building and move it over and have the concrete there. And uh, if there's any monies left over, uh, you know, that could be, we're, we're not gonna have 7,000 left over. So maybe we'll use all of their 13, five plus whatever is we need out of ours. And then we'll satisfy their needs then we'll see what we have left over and determine what we want to do with it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So you want me to, want, should I set, um, let me stop that. 
So should I set up a special board meeting for later this week or next? Is, is there a, a timeline on that document? I don't know. Okay. But, but I'll take a look at it again tomorrow morning and get back and, uh, and I'll, I'll email the board as a getting back to you. But yeah, one of the thoughts was we've got another grant we're watching for and uh, it, it should, we should find out whether we get anything or not yet this month. So kind of the thought was if we get another 13,000 or more, should we just put it together and skip the dome building for now and build the big roll off? Um, the more I thought about it, I really liked that idea until I thought, well, we're probably going to be 10,000 short even at that. So maybe it's better just to... Uh, get the dome taken care of and also a building for Cecil scope out there. So anybody have any ideas what we want to do with $20,000 today? Start building. Jeff, you mentioned that you thought that the roll off would be quite a bit more expensive. Yeah. Is that, is there something moving over from, uh, uh, for the dome, is that is the dome already over at the other the other site? Uh, everything is over at Sherman Park yet. The, the the our dome is there, and we've got our twenty inch scope, and we'll be selling our sixteen inch. But the reason the roll off is going to be so much more, I don't remember the exact dimensions, but it's made like twenty six by thirty two. So it's okay. you know like a three car garage. The original so, plan right. was to have the 20 inch be one of the scopes in the new roll off building. And then with some more money, we'd buy at least two other good sized scopes for it. Yeah. And one of them uh, we were going to get from Jim. And that, that was, what was that, Jim? Was that a 170 F75 or something? Or Yeah, that's right. It's 170 millimeters F8 with a reducer corrector that also makes an F6. Six. And that's an astrophysics star. <coughs> a very high <coughs> or, or scope. Hmm. Oh. That scope is really too long for that little dome, that 12 and a half foot dome, isn't it, Jim? No, I don't think so. Okay. So that's a possibility too. Be with the extra money, get a mount in in the dome, so that we're ready for uh, that scope when the funds come available. So we, we've been thinking of a lot of variations on this project. We need to. It all has to do with money. How much money we have, and how to put it to best use. Even then. So, yeah, so I'll send out an email to the board. We'll set up a time to meet again and go from there. I guess, glad to wait and see and go from there. Um, yeah, Jim, you haven't heard back from Scott County Regional yet? No, I have not. And I looked to see uh, when they respond six months ago and it, it, it's still, you know, based on the same timing, it would still be another month before they respond. Now, maybe they'll get to us sooner. Yeah. Well. well, yeah, we should at least decide what to do with this grand money we are getting. Split this split this phase of the project in two, maybe. Yeah, you know, that's that's kind of the, gonna be the challenge. Um, what, what do we currently think is the best way to make use of the monies that we have? You know, I think that there's, of course, we have an objective, just, just to summarize what we've been talking about for the last couple of years, we have an objective to move everything from um, the, our, our current observatory at Sherman to, to Minky. 
um, move all move most of the equipment and uh, buy some new equipment. And I think you know we put we had a pretty ambitious list of of expenditures that might be as much as $150,000. And that's a lot of money. And it's based on the assumption of getting some pretty big grants, which, you know, may be pretty optimistic. Uh, you know, the, the way money's been coming in, that looks really optimistic. So, you know, just trying to decide what's a reasonable scope to be working on. But I think we've talked about three different projects one would be move the 12 foot dome currently at Sherman, put that on top of a building at Minky. Mm -hmm. Then, and we've talked a little bit about what the size of that building should be. And the larger it is, the more money it costs. And then also the concrete work and maybe even the building could club members, would club members, be interested in doing some of the work themselves to make our money go farther. And that's really the comment about all of these three phases. But anyway, the first project is moving that. Yeah, there, thank you. Uh, moving the dome. The second project is, uh, and, and not necessarily in any specific order, move the 20 inch telescope somewhere at to Minky. Now, whether that's put it in this new large roll off roof, which is quite expensive, or whether it's put it into the Minky roll off roof, which I think is a 20 or by 16 foot building. And, and Dr. Mitchell is considering moving his 12 inch cave out of the way so the 20 inch could could get onto this property. Um, and then the third project would be make a place for Cecil's 30 inch Dobsonian. And if there was room in a big dome, or I'm sorry, a big roll off, maybe it could go in there. The other option is kind of on the far end of the minimalist scale would be pour a concrete pad, set the telescope on that pad, and then you would store the, rotate the telescope in the horizontal position for storage. And then we would have a enclosure just a little bit larger than the size of the telescope that you rolled over it and bolted it down to the concrete slab. So for a relatively modest amount of money, we think we could get the 30 inch scope in operation that Cecil would loan to the club. So those are kind of the three projects that we're talking about and just, you know, which ones you do first, how many can we do, how many can we afford to do is kind of what the board's been wrestling with. So any comments that anybody wants to make, sure open it up. Open the floor to comments. The actual cover for the 30 sounds very, very fast, easy, inexpensive to do. So yeah, I see it, that's, that's a good idea. I was hoping the 20,000 that we have would build the dome building and build Cecil's building over there. So, some, somebody did bring up an important point over email as to how closely we need to uh, adhere to the original plan that was included in the grant application. Had some different differing opinions and replies. Any anybody want to comment on that? Well, one of the things that that letter says, uh, Robert, is that if you have any questions about the grant, you could you could email them and set up a call. Mm -hmm. I think that would be a good question to ask them. They say it's that 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 we've had discussions and we've we've discussed different plans and. Uh, 
then they could probably say you can use your money anywhere you want as long as you use it for the for the astronomy club or you got to stick to the plan that would be rather than us guessing just ask yeah and i think if we adhere to it we're still good by building the dome building because it's going to cost yes. more than 13,000 to do that i don't think it's going to take all the 20 but we can use all their money and subsidize the the rest of it so we'll be strictly adhering and the money that we have left over should build the building for Cecil's the ward observatory and if you think about it we were originally said in the application we we're going to put the money toward a new scope well yeah but Cecil would be getting a new scope to be a different one from what we're talking about but yes All right. Any other comments? Is anybody knowledgeable about doing concrete work and uh, piers and roll off rubs and how to build a, a rectangular building and put a round dome on top? We did meet with, um, and I never can remember his name. Scott um, Deringer. Deringer, yeah. Scott. Deringer. And uh, he built a number of small observatories, and he's kind of a contractor type. So he gave us plenty of tips on the concrete work. Uh, and it almost sounds like he would help oversee it. Um, and being a, uh, involved, uh, I don't know if he was a contractor or what his... Uh, forte was but it sounded like he'd even help oversee and draw plans for this rectangular building with the room with the dome put on top of it so if we decide to go that route i think that we can utilize him to uh, design it and uh then get a contractor over there to build the stuff and uh before of course we do that if anybody wants to get their hands dirty and do any kind of work we'll see uh if we can do some of it and save a few dollars um, that wasn't necessarily my game plan, but uh, this is not my observatory. So if people want to go over and do some work, um, I'd help out some. I'm not as fit as I used to be 25 years ago where I could, you know, raise rafters and do all that. But <clears throat> I, built well, a few, I built a few hundred houses, so I've got a little bit of knowledge about standard construction. Well, I think one consensus from that meeting is that we need to have a truck bring the cement in for, for the, to lay it out. And just... Yeah, yeah. And as soon as we decide what we want to do out there with this money, then I'll go talk to a couple contractors and see what we can do. Um, I was going to go out this week until I found out we've got money, and here in a few weeks we might have more. So I, I thought if the board says, no, this is what we're going to do, then I'll approach a couple contractors. I just don't want to be hitting up somebody to donate time and labor or whatever and getting bids and then kind of sound wishy-washy by coming back and telling them we changed our, our mind, we're gonna do something different. So um, after the next board meeting, we'll get firm, this is what we're going to do. And then I'll go out and see what, what I can get accomplished. Does anybody yes. else know any contractors that we might be able to talk to and? get a discount or a donation or anything? Well, just letting my mind wander here, but St. Ambrose has recently finished a new addition to McMullen Hall and they might probably, they still have contacts with the construction crew that uh, did that. Yeah, that construction company, maybe they're interested in, you know, since they did that major work, maybe they're interested in doing something for us out there. I, you know? I could ask Ambrose to give me a contact. Yeah. And, and I know Triver Constructions and I know Tri-City Blacktop, and those are the two I'm going to hit up. No guarantees, of course, but it doesn't cost anything to ask.
let's see, uh, Dave is the site director um, at the Wapsie River Center. Dave Mercia, yes. Now, Dave probably has some experience with some contractors that they've used on, on their site that maybe could, you know, he could recommend ones that he thought were good. Um, also, where, where they have gotten ready mix concrete and any other inputs he has on construction that, that might be some leads. Hmm. Yeah, and we need to approach him right too because when we first talked to him about us uh, relocating, uh, he in, uh, commented that they might have some money that they could donate to us as well. And I was thinking, you know, they were looking at the thousand dollars kind of thing that they might uh, ship in to help us get stuff going. It would be it would be perfect timing. It seems to be able to say, okay, we do have a grant. It's not enough to do everything we want. We have some money in our observatory fund. What other funding can we get? You know, do you, can you either provide us some, and do you know other people that we might talk to? Yeah. I can, I can send a few emails, see if anyone bites. Um, yeah, well. Well, a Ambrose is transitioning to a new president and our college is transitioning to a new dean. So I think things might be a little fluid there, but I'll see you. I'll, I, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Cool. Uh. Sam has a friend joining us. All right. Not by choice. <laughs> Cats do whatever they want. I just. Is there any other business that we need to bring up at uh, today tonight's meeting? Well, not related to astronomy, but our vice president got married this weekend, in case you didn't know. And everybody say congratulations at the same time. Hey. Not that he's here, yeah. but Congrats, congratulations, Paul. To yeah, Paul. congratulations, Paul. Yeah, but he's not here. Obviously, he's probably enjoying his marriage. I did not know that, but yes, congratulations to Paul. Yeah, he's all over Facebook if, uh, if you care to take a look. Is there, is there any other news that Paul's been sharing with us? Uh, he shared a few things with me that absolutely shocked me. I was surprised besides the fact that he was getting married. He, uh, he put up his house for sale and he quit his job. How's that? Wow. I know he had shared that with me, but I didn't know if he was... Uh, publicizing that so well and so he told me so obviously he's not afraid to tell anybody i guess <laughs> he must not be afraid of anything or be doing all that yeah. uh, what's this this is the full list of equipment that we were thinking of for the observatory Who's sharing this? Me. It's kind of an impressive uh, list. It gives us all an idea just how much we were. Yeah, well, this was the final list. We put together some uh, groups of people to go out and research gear, and we had voted on this equipment being what we want to get. Mm hmm
it's interesting. Uh, this mount is exactly what the Wilton Observatory bought, and uh, I'll be setting up for them. And I've got the, the baby brother of that one. Mount 175 millimeter refractor, adaptive optics. Another interesting thing that's happened since then, uh, we're, we're looking here for a, a wide field uh, imaging refractor up here and the solar scope. Lunt now has uh, dual purpose scopes. They make a triplet about that size that you uh, unscrew the focuser and you put on their solar system so that you can use the same telescope as an HA scope or a nighttime scope. Modular. Yeah, thank you, modular. And uh, it's less money, I think, than this 8,000. Uh, and then that would eliminate, you know, so, so that $12,000 would probably be cut like in half or less. So there has been some advancement since we put this list together. Nice. Adaptive, adaptive optics. I mean, as a professional astronomer, I think the, I'm that thinking of the big laser systems that professional observatories use to eliminate atmospheric turbulence. Mm. What, what, what were you thinking of when you put that down? I don't remember what we were talking about on that. Jim, do you remember? I've got all kinds of documentation on this, but. You know, what pops in my mind initially is that uh, Santa Barbara Instruments used to make a adaptive optics system that cost around $1,200. It was a little mirror that would move about 8,000 or 80 times per second. I don't, yes. think, I don't think they any longer make that and whether they now have replaced it with something else, I'm not sure, but that may have been what we were thinking of. That could be because it says say $1,200. Okay. You can, you can find it from other people. I think, uh, ah, I forget their name, the people that makes the, there's other people that make cameras also that make an adaptive optics for theirs, uh, I can't remember their name right now, but yeah. I've seen them. I've seen a few. I mean, I think what that would do for astrophotography alone. Yeah, I guess, I don't know. I, I would have to research more to see how much people get out of it after the investment, right? Because uh, I really haven't seen anybody review any of them online. So I don't know what they say. I think that some of this will want to review before we actually make purchases, especially when we're talking oh, yeah. cameras. Yes. I mean, scopes and mounts and stuff like that are in the uh, computers and that are pretty standardized. But when we're talking about um, Filters could have changed, especially Astrodon kind of took a step down. I don't know if they're back yet, uh, but cameras have made some huge improvements uh, since then. So, well, now that we've sharpened our grant writing skills, maybe we'll have better luck. Right. Well, does anyone have any questions on anything in this list about anything in this list? You know, and the total amount is uh, astronomical. Uh, <laughs> you couldn't resist, you have, could you? Yeah, unless you have you know, a, a big benefactor and that's, you know, this is kind of the ultimate if 
if we got in a position where we uh, were able to obtain a large amount of money. Other than that, obviously, we have to not a compromises. And along that line, a, a few minutes ago, it was asked, did anybody else know other places that we could apply for grants or obtain money? And I was talking to Steve Van Hefty earlier today about grants, and he reminded me that the Day Corporation or, or the Day Foundation um, was somebody that he had talked to 15 years ago. They're still in existence. Steve and I did an internet search. And Dr. Mitchell, I'm going to forward you the um, web link that I find. It'll just be a, another place that, that we can consider. Um, they, I think their grants are due the, maybe the end of uh, June, so it would be timely. Mm. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Please, please. Yeah. Please send that. And, and the fact that we, we have written, you know, we have a, a, a grant framework, a proposal that we've written. So we've done a lot of the legwork. So to write a, another grant, uh, pretty much means you, you take what we have and we put it in the format. So it's yeah. may, maybe 80% of the work is already done and the number of us are willing to kind of go yeah. together on top of that. Yeah. S something else to discuss at our next board meeting. I mean, not, now we have this grant to for the dome project. We want to figure out what's the next phase that we want to write this next, next grant for, to ask for. Yes, yep. All right. Is there anything else? Um. Any other any other business, or are we still on this still on this business? Well, you, you know, we we talked about Cecil's thirty inch scope, and one possibility is put it in a big building. That'd be the ultimate. The other approach that's probably more attainable in the short term is put down a concrete pad and build this little st structure to go around it. Right. I know Cecil's interested in uh, seeing that happen. He's interested in participating in the design and the construction. The board has talked about it. If, if a few members want to volunteer to be on a committee to help Cecil and the board advance that and see if we can get that 30 inch in operation yet this year i would say raise your hand if it sounds like a project you're interested in helping with and either contact cecil or one of the board members or speak up right now i think the main concern is is getting the pad down for that we need we need to make that part of the cement work yeah And I, you know, we could we could hire somebody to do that. Uh, but Jeff asked, is there anybody that's, um, you know, has some experience with construction? And I have built concrete pads, and I worked for a company where that was part of my job is doing construction. So, you know, I know a little bit about concrete, and I'd be willing to help with, you know. A, a, an on slab, um, an on grade slab, you know, is 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 straightforward, and digging a hole and putting in the the pier concrete foundation is is doable too, and working with uh, iron to reinforce it. So, yeah, if anybody wants to do that, we can get together and put together a proposal. Any takers? Is it uh, is it, it it is possible, isn't it, to uh, to actually rent one of those cement mixers? Yes. I mean, I don't know how it all works, but 
Yeah, and we certainly could look at the uh, the cost of having ready mix delivered on site compared to mixing it ourselves and see which is more economical. I think that John Baker had expressed some willingness to help. Um, Howard Cox used to be uh, pretty willing to help. I know he's just like the rest of us, a few years older than we used to be, but uh, Howard might be willing to help. Um, I got one thing to say. It might help too to maybe get concrete to get it from a place that's the closest to the observatory location is maybe Scott County Ready Mix that is right there south of Eldridge. I don't know, sometimes the closer something is, I don't know, they might have their rates. And uh, there's Lovewell Fence that had a guy that did a slab for me and he mainly works on the highway stuff, but he does side jobs like that. And uh, I, I could probably find his name, but um, uh, there's, like I said, you guys have mentioned several, there, you get quite a few possibilities. And then there's also Eller Foundation that is out there um, by Eldridge also, big operation, you know, maybe he might feel like, uh, and they've got a crew that would come in there and knock it out in no time. Um, you know, maybe he would, since he's so successful and has done so many foundations for years, maybe he might be interested in helping out. Those are a couple excellent um, suggestions. I think certainly somebody that's local that we don't have too much travel time, whether that's the ready mix company, uh, a contractor, a person that works on the side, you know, I've, I've utilized some people that like to work on nights and weekends that are in that trade, uh, you know, professionally during the day, but they're looking for some extra money and they're willing to help out. You know, they're a, they're a super resource as an opportunity. So this uh, Lovewell gentleman that you mentioned, um, yeah, we'd, we'd like to talk about that. Yeah. Um, like I said, he came in and two days he was done and he uh, even extended the back, which was about eh, 30 foot long. He says, I want to make sure you get enough concrete for your back patio. He says, it's nothing just to move the forms out two more foot. And he just kept the price the same. So <laughs> oh, wow. I believe it. It'd probably be quite a bit more cost effective if we could get as much concrete work done at one time as possible. Especially if, uh, well, regardless, I mean, if you got people out there doing excavating work and putting up forms and having trucks drive out with concrete, you know. Yeah, make it worthwhile. Uh, I don't know. They might have to do two separate pours, though, one for the pier and then one for the, uh, you know, just the four inch concrete. Another thing you could do too is, you know, to make a full load of concrete, I think the average truck hauls about seven yards. Uh, they could even pour, you know, two or four pads, you know, so that they make their trip worthwhile. I don't know. I'm thinking that the way we're doing this, I think that we can pour the pier and the, the slab at the same time. because It's going to be isolated if we've got sonitude down there. Right. The I understand. Pool, and then you pour around it with the slab and. Yep. You're done. It's all going to be the same height. It's not raised. You know, the pier is yeah. not going to be raised off the, it's going to be the same height as the slab. I have a guy that did my driveway and had put my patio, concrete patio out behind the house. Um, and he does this all on the side. You know, my driveway's 100 foot long. <laughs> so, you know, he did that in two days. Cool. So I'll get a hold of him and see if he might be interested in. He does awesome work. I mean, that's what he does for a living. So, And according to Scott, we don't need a smooth finish on this concrete, but a broom finish. So that takes a lot of work away from uh, whoever does the concrete work. If it's us or whoever that, you know, you don't have to sit there and know how to make it, you know. Plus, if it ever got wet, you don't have to worry about somebody slipping on a polished surface, too. 
Right, right. So a broom finish should be less expensive and easier and quicker. Is there an issue with getting a, a concrete truck onto the site? As long as it's dry, I think we're okay. Okay. It wasn't an issue when the original I'm not, I'm not when the original observatory was built. Assuming. Yeah, I just don't want to tear have have something torn up that we have to you know get yeah. a truck stuck or something and. Well, we coordinated with Wapsie River. I mean, make sure they're okay with it. Well, they like the project, and they they've seen what we wanted to do and where we wanted to put it. So, um, th there, there's going to be some cleanup work. I mean, we're doing some pretty major construction. It's you know, but the the dome building is right on the road that goes from uh, the blacktop to the parking lot. So th that's been used for years and years and years. And there's actually some gravel underneath the grass there. So it's going to be pretty decent for that. Um, Cecil's building, depending on where we put it, could be a little bit different story. But I don't think it, you know, if we do the uh, main building first, that's a lot of weight that we're going to be dumping uh, in concrete out of that truck so that the smaller uh, pad. I don't think we need frost footings or a pair for Cecil's, right? It just needs to be a decent slab that'll hold it. Am I, is, is that correct? I think that's right. Yeah. So it'll be a lot less concrete. So I put up another picture. Do you guys see this uh, Excel spreadsheet? Yes. Yeah, this is kind of the design for the big roll off building. Uh, and this is where that 24 foot by 32 foot came forward. And this is kind of uh, north right on this side. So that north is pointing that way. And uh, so the, the little control room would be over here built later on. But this would hold our 20 inch scope. And at the time we were gonna put the 16 inch scope in. And then uh, Jim's scope would, that we'd be buying would go right here. Then we are going to pour four additional pads that have uh, footings so that if we wanted to later on add four more telescopes or if somebody wanted to set up their own telescope in here and utilize this building for some project we're doing, we could actually put four more <laughs> in here. Anything else? Comments, questions? All right. Any further business? <coughs> Buddy. Let's... Is there any business that you think we should bring up at our next board meeting? Sounds pretty quiet out there. We need a presentation for our next general meeting, which is, when is that? Uh, June 21st. Anyone have any ideas? Craig, you feel like talking about your ASI error? I can do that a little bit. I can do that a little bit. Um, reason why I didn't bring up the purchase because this was done about two months ago. I bought a, a, a 
bunch of ZWO components. I bought a, a ZWO ASI 533MC Pro camera. And along with that, I got a automatic focuser that will control the focusing per frame along with the ASI Air, which is a computer control hub. You plug everything in and when you do your polar alignment, it does plate solving to do that by itself. The only thing you need to do, adjust your azimuth, uh, your adjustment knobs, right ascension and declination. And once you get that in, it tells you if it's good or not. And then when you choose a particular object, it will move to that object, plate solve it, and then move it to center for you, which is a fairly new product that came out about a year and a half ago. I've been doing a pretty much in-depth study on making sure everything's right. Right now, I'm still waiting for my guide camera, my uh, ZWO ASI 120MC, camera that I got from Jeff a few years ago is not part of this system. So I have to buy a new one. And uh, along with that, I am looking for a way to uh, control the whole rig without any plugins because right now I don't know where I'm going to be other than my backyard. So other than that, I'm uh, very positive on the possibility of what it's capable of doing. Uh, so last, like it, it sounds yeah. like it'd be a good talk. If you, are you available to do that then next month? Oh, I just did. <laughs> well, again, <laughs> I haven't set it up yet. It's in theory hooked up. I got the camera and I shot a couple pictures from a long distance away and it came out pretty good. I'm still studying on the programming of the ASI Air, which they have your gain, your uh, time exposure, how you want it, where you're going to put it. They have what they're doing right now. It's called Benning. If you're familiar with that, Benning is a program that will leasing the amount of pixels in the camera, but brightens it and brings and draws in more photons per shot. But the more you bend, you have four settings, bend one, two, three, and four. The more you go into the higher number, the less sharp it is, but the stronger the colors and it draws out more nebulosity. Each camera has its capability Mine is an ASI 533 color, and they recommend anything between Ben 2 to Ben 4. Uh, but again, Ben 4 blurs it more. And yeah, it's, um, I'm excited about the possibilities of what it's capable of doing. You could set up a full night photography shot, everything but flats. And that does flats too, but you have to do it manually setting it to get it right. But other than that, I have purchased along with that, uh, the camera, a five position two inch filter wheel, all electronic. And along with that, I got a black two inch filter. So you can do your blacks, darks, or and, and, and uh, bias programmed. You don't have to be there once you set it up it uh, does it for you. Along with the fact that I have this 10 inch Samsung Galaxy uh, tablet. As you know that my, my, uh, my picture isn't red. My, the old uh, laptop was not a good camera. Everything's gonna be run out of Wi-Fi through my system or through an extender on the, uh, the hub through my tablet, no cords. Everything's done through Wi-Fi, which is exciting to me. I've already did a test run by setting my camera up to take that picture of the a bud tree flower 
that was about three quarter mile away with my camera from the garage. I went into the living room and sat down on my couch to do the focusing and running it. I, I, that's real exciting. Uh, very promising. Very, very promising. My uh, Skywatch uh, EQ 6R Pro is not going to be in until August. So it's a long ways away. Craig, does, does the Air um, come with a software that allows you to sequence through a number of objects and photographs and do the plate solving for you? Yep. Yes, it does. It, it does everything short of your bias or your flats because that has to be adjusted by the amount of light filtering through your lens to get the right histogram it has to be center or slightly left of center on the histogram, which it has as well. And it does uh, uh, auto guiding, multi-star auto guiding. So once it sets up, it'll lock in a particular star and you decide if you want to do a one star alignment or a one star to uh, lock down with your guide scope or a multiple stars. And they say the multiple stars, which is a new program is doing very well. Did you say you do have a uh, Skywatcher EQ mount on order? Yes, I do. Okay. It won't be until August. But in the meantime, you still have your Atlas mount? Oh, yes, I do have my Atlas. Um, again, I, uh, I set everything up in the basement. And again, that guide scope camera was giving me a problems, but I used the same plug-in for my Atlas to the hub, ASI Air, and it recognized it right away, and it runs it through the tablet. Oh, very neat. Yeah, it's a fairly new product. I'm excited about it. Hopefully, I'll be able to show it in person one of these days. You got a month to learn everything about it and tell us on the next meeting. <laughs> well, well, like that I said, would, the, the okay camera, because you could let us know how your progress is, trials and tribulations. Oh, sure. What sure. you don't like sure. about it, what's why you're pulling out. You got a lot of hair, so you're not pulling out much of it. <laughs> and um, the only problem I had was I'm buying this stuff through OPT and I'm talking their text, and they pretty much told me there's something wrong with the program or the driver or ASCOM that's not allowing the camera to be noticed, only to get a message from ZWO in China who told me, and then I told OPT, that it's not part of their, problem, their program. They won't accept that. So they learned about the time I did that it wasn't going to talk to it. That's a shame because it's a good camera. Yeah. Because I use it in uh, SharpCap and it runs per, uh, beautifully. But you, you, you asked me last uh, month to talk about the DOB for us. You want me to talk about that? It's not very long, but. Sure. Okay. Again, um, it was discussed that I could talk about it. I'm not really much of a speaker, but I'll do the best I can. Uh, I would say back in the mid to late 80s, I, was, uh, I went out to Mankey with Howard, my brother, who was trying to get me excited about becoming a member. And all I could see was gray, fuzzy, objects in the sky and I didn't think it was too exciting so off and on I'd come out and it, rather exciting but not that exciting but there was one at the later uh, later part of 1990s at a Mankey star party I was with Gary Chernowski and we spent the whole night with his deep sky 10 just going from object to object to object 
and I thought it was exciting. It actually put a large light bulb in my my head as far as this is exciting. And the reason why it was exciting because he, at the same time, showed me a book called The Pocket Sky Atlas. And at that time it was um, four by six and about an inch thick. And each page had a section of the sky. And on the last page, it had the grand total of what every page was so you can find an object. Of course, I have the, the bigger book now and for my eyes, I could use it. And it comes in a, I don't know, plastic or a waxy cover so it doesn't go bad. And that's what my excitement became where if you look at an object on the map, try to figure out and collate the stars in that area and find an object within those stars or roughly out of the, the group of the stars and to be able to find it, that's where I found out that the excitement of astronomy was manual viewing. I do realize I, I have a system that is a go-to scope. Setup time is a lot longer. Everything has to run proper or you don't have any fun at all. And with the, the DOB, it's a simple 10 minutes, 15 minutes, if you're really slow, setting it up, getting it arranged so that everything is right, so that you can find things like the, the eyepieces or the books or a table. And when it gets dark, it's a simple move. All you have to do is recognize patterns in the sky, move your scope in that area. And what I do is I pick where I think it is and I do what they call a circular pattern around that object until that object comes into view. And yeah, it's, um, I enjoy it. There's, there's been times uh, with the, the Dob, I would go, uh, I don't know, uh, like Green River bootleggers. I remember having at least eight to 10 people in line. And by the time everybody got a view once or twice of the object, of course, that was with my Deep Sky 16, which had a motorized uh, declination motor. So it pretty much stayed center. Uh, this one has a tendency to drift, so it's not motorized. So every three people I have to go over to IP, center it, and hope for the best. But uh, yeah, it, um, I would, um, once eight to 10 people went through the scope, viewed what we we're looking at, I'd look at the chart, pick another one, eye them up. And by the time the last person I'd explain what we were going to get a laser out, point at the constellation it's in, where I think it should be, where the book says it should be, move it there, find it, and then do the same thing over and over again. Uh, the excitement I found with that was knowing that I could go to a chart, find an object, find it in the night sky, and know that I did that. That's, I mean, that really put up a lot of excitement in me to continue the process of astronomy. And I know I'm drifting off a little bit with the motorized system because I want to take pictures. I have taken pictures in the past, uh, but I did not know how to process them. And I made up my mind this year or last year with COVID that I would work on processing and I think I thanks to you guys I, I got into ask Axel astral pixel process which was a very large uh, I don't know it, it got me elevated to the point where I could, where I'd continue so I got a couple other post processing uh, that were inexpensive and I, I, I'm pretty happy about it. now I want to go back and do pictures so I can post-process and get some fancy pictures I can call my own. But again, the trust job is excellent. It can be exciting knowing that you look at a chart, 
try to find it in a nice guy and be successful in finding it. Mm -hmm. About it. Yeah. Yay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, APP might be something Dan will be interested in at some point because uh, Dan, if you're still awake, um, APP is a post-production, post-processing tool for astrophotography. And I'm thinking that you wanted to get into that at some point, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm still awake and yep, that's what I'm interested in. It's a good, uh, um, a good way to start, it really is. You can, can I do, I think there's six levels of adjustments, but they have standards that it's preset. So you can go in, put your po uh, post-process pictures, your lights, bias, darks, and, and uh, you can go right straight to six and have it stack and process. And then you go to nine, which is post-processing and you can fine tune by stretching amongst other things. I think we've got uh, videos on using that, that uh, we had seminars on that and uh, we recorded the guy that actually developed the program. Oh yeah. So you can log into it and watch step by step how he did everything. The uh, picture I showed you a few months ago about TriFan, that was where I went back in and set the first settings, the master settings before putting in the pictures to use H alpha and sulfur too, processed it and had, had it stored. And then I went back and redid it with oxygen three blue. And then in post-processing, after I was done with both of them, I had to put together so I can get the reds, oranges, and blues. The blues didn't come out as sharp as I wanted, but I think it turned out pretty good for playing around. It is worth the money. I paid more than you guys, but hey, it is worth more than money. All right. Yes, thank you, Craig. Thanks, Craig. Thanks, Craig. Any time. Well, Dan, what do you think of our society meetings? I thought it was good. Yep. I'm I'm ready to join. I sent you an email. <laughs> Glad to have you. Yeah. Just tell me what I need to do. We just well, want your money. <laughs> Well, based on the based on meeting, I can see where it's going to a good cause. To me, the camaraderie is worth more <laughs> than anything else. Yeah, I'm sure. Just wait till we're able to meet in person again. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be the best part. It's going think, to happen. I think we're getting there. Yeah. Yep. Before this COVID happened, we had our in-person meetings in uh, one of the classrooms at St. Ambrose University. Yeah, it'd be a good place up there. Yeah, they're kind enough just to let us use a room. Mm -hmm. And there's a village inn right across the street from St. Ambrose where we often meet, meet after the meeting to continue <laughs> the camaraderie. Right. Yes. Have pie or breakfast and cash about gear and all that always kind of enjoyable yeah i've always liked the uh, social part of the club sometimes i'm more into the social part than the actual astronomy but uh i gotta tell you if the power ever goes out or you can't do your go-to and craig's around he's the guy that can find anything in the sky <laughs> find something. i could try <laughs> I, I, I see him do it and amaze me. <laughs> well, thank you. Sounds like a good guy to learn from. Yes. All right. I mean, Sam, can you give me the details about where where to send the uh, the dues? 
and we'll uh, add you to the email list so you can keep up with the future meetings and future events. Does he have to? Uh, does Jason have to send him an invite to get on the website, or how good, does that work? Does good he... question. And uh, Jason would be the one to ask about that. The, do you mean to log into the website? Yeah. Oh, uh, I thought Matt Nielsen was setting that up. But oh, you mean the web the website? Matt Matt was the original guy about that. Yes. So maybe when we get Dan's contact information, we can forward that to Jason and Matt and get him set up. Yeah, Jason can probably set up his email on the member's account. Jason would do that. Yeah. Matt might be the one for the website. Yeah, between the two of them. Between the two of them, we'll get you in, Dan. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm not worried about it. We'll, we'll get it worked out. <laughs> okay. Uh, is there anything else we should talk about? One thing I'm excited about is uh, if uh, Cecil's 30 inch uh, also comes to reality out at Minky, I think that would be great for drawing people if some people actually got to see what that 30 inch will do, just visual. Uh, I think that would be a big drawing point. I uh, can remember when um, Craig took me out to um, Sherman Park the first time and I looked through the 20 inch at things that I've never seen through a 20 inch. So, and I was wowed at that. I can't imagine a 30 inch seeing what you can see visually. I think it would be. I think it would be a big draw, possibly, where some people would say, wow, they come out for public night. You know, you got to come out and see this thing. You know, I don't know. Just my opinion. Yep. Which then occurs to me, Cecil, if you're letting us have the 30 inch, will you also provide the ladder? <laughs> no, just stick a big camera in the, in the focus, big screen down below. Well, I've got, I've got, you know, a 10 foot ladder. And we'll need a couple, ways. we'll need a couple club owned parachutes. Or one yeah, of those big air mattresses that stun people use. Yeah, that's the only thing you just don't want somebody, especially in the dark, stumbling or falling. That'd be a big liability thing. But if you make a ladder with, you know, some rails on it or whatever, or modify it. I think you'd be okay and maybe have a spotter kind of. <laughs> but they do have these ladders that are on four wheels. So long as you have a cement pad. Right. With side rails, they have them in warehouses where you can go up, my, 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 far enough for the scope to be able to view from the eyepiece and be safe as well. Yeah, I've seen them in big box stores too. That would be what you would need. Uh, Jeff, you remember when we went to Minnesota to that, that party out there? And that guy had that 24-inch uh, truss? Yeah. He had one of those, and it was on gravel. Yeah. I don't know how he did that. That had pneumatic tires or what. But we can, get those, size tires. We can get those over it. There's an industrial supply place across the river that uh, – sells used gear and stuff. And I've seen them over there, those ladders with a little cage at the top, you climb, you walk up. It's almost like a little stairwell, stairway, rather than a ladder. Well, I would say the pad for that 30 would have to be as round as the radius of the height of the scope, so that you could put your ladder anywhere within that range, all yeah. the way around. Yes. That'd be a great addition to the system. Yeah, it's only four inch out there if you just use a four inch slab. So it's not like you're going 12 inches deep or anything like that, but uh, you'd want enough room. But then the actual roll off part, if it's, uh, you know, eight foot square and it rolls on a track, but the actual round part uh, would be outside the, um, part that rolls over the scope, in other words, like a right. boxcar. Correct. So 
then then you'd have to have a, maybe a place where you could lay the ladder down though too. Yeah. We think about that later. Yeah. Yeah, if you had an extra foot or two in diameter, maybe even from the radius of the scope wouldn't be bad. So you got, you know, people that you got enough room. We remember where the slab was that we had ripped up and removed? Yeah. I, um, when we went out there and did the measurements on the actual height, that is the crown of that hill. Right, right. I think that would be ideal for that 30. Yeah. Well, I learned when I was a kid, make sure you get that elevation of the concrete right, because uh, one time I had a little slab poured for something as a kid, and every time it rained, the rain came right over it because it wasn't, it should have been another couple inches higher. Right. Yeah, the, the, the pad is going to have to be above ground level, that's for sure. Yeah. But being on top of the hill. You're, you're there really anyway, there. almost. Yeah. You know, on a big step off, people step off on it in the dark, but just, just raised enough so it's above ground level. Agreed. Agreed. Right. Yep. Okay. Anything else? Going once, going twice, going twice and a half. <laughs> uh, motion to adjourn then. I'll move. I second. Second. Okay. I want to say next general meeting is June twenty first. So see, see you all then. Thanks so much. Have a good, good one. You too. Everyone have a good night. Good night. You bet. Right. Take care. Be safe. Bye. 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 Bye.